So for me, personally, the morning routine starts the night before. Yeah. I, I cannot have a successful morning routine unless I prepare the night before. So for me personally, it's very important to take time in the evening to meditate, just be quiet, reflect on my day, reflect on, you know, what I want to accomplish the next day, and also be set up for a good night of sleep, because I can't, I can't be there for my clients and, you know, provide the level of detail and service without being rested and calm and collected. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up, and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lunid, and today it's an honor, it's a privilege to welcome a very special guest to the show, Marianne Key. She's a financial advisor working with single, divorced, and widowed women, and she specializes in the whole picture. We talk about holistic financial planning. She has a very extensive expertise in Social Security and Medicare pertaining to financial planning and you know, social security isn't as straightforward as we think, and it's not as easy to get, especially with, um, we can talk about the economy too and what's going to be available for, for some of us in the younger generation, but I do want to bring her on to kind of shed some insight on how to move forward with that. She is certified, so with no further ado, Marianne, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dr. Lanid. It's an honor. I'm really, really excited to have you on board. I always love a good story of a background, like how did you get into financial planning? What were you doing prior to that? So walk us through your journey thus far. Well, I've, I've got a great story, an unusual background. So my education is actually in music. Um, I studied um, playing the flute. I'm a, I'm a flutist by training. And after I finished my master's degree, I knew that I had to have some kind of job on the side to make sure I could pay my rent. And I started working part time for a financial advisor. And um, as the years went on, I found that I wasn't getting the work in music that I wanted. It wasn't fulfilling me. And at the time, I was working for Craig Beaton of Beaton Wealth Management, where I, I still work. And I'm proud that I've been there for over 15 years now. And he offered me a career path. He said, hey, I see that, you know, you're maybe not happy with the music work you're doing. You know, I'm happy to sponsor some education for you and teach you the ropes. And I went from, you know, answering the phones and filing papers to being a financial advisor. And it's very fulfilling. I enjoy being able to help people and do meaningful work that impacts people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at that. You acquired a mentor. <laughs> I did. I did. To show you the rope, those are very important it's along the journey of success. Like, so we don't have to make the same mistakes that they made, or it doesn't mm -hmm. have to take us 20 years to learn what they learned. How, what was that impact for you? So having a mentor in the financial planning industry is particularly important because we have to be experts in so many areas. We need to know about tax planning, retirement planning, estate planning, investment planning, insurance planning, and Someone in their 20s can't do that alone. Mm -hmm. you, you need to have someone to really guide you and help, help fill in the gaps while you're trying to learn everything. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, mentorship is the way to go to actually expedite the learning process, especially having to become an expert. So tell us about the women you do serve. What are some of the concerns that they bring to you? So I find in, in my work with women who have been recently divorced or have lost their spouse that there's still a lot of women out there that just haven't haven't learned about personal finance and they have a more traditional role in their in their marriage and oftentimes you know the man was in charge of yeah. of the finances so when they're finding themselves in a position to need to take over of the finances, they're lost and they're right. scared and they're sometimes ashamed 
that they don't know anything about personal finance. So one of my favorite things about my job is just taking the time to educate women about how all the pieces of their financial life fit together and um, how we can create their new future with education and planning. Yeah, you're, you're creating a lot of hope for these women, right? Yes. So a lot of the time they're coming from a place of despair, of pain and, and hurt, and you, they, they, you know, they need some type of security. That's right. And then you come provide it. So I can see how that can be very, very fulfilling for you. Um, what is it that you find you have to teach them? Anything from the difference between stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs, all the way up through, you know, how do, how do my estate planning documents, my wills and trusts integrate with my investment accounts? Um, you know, what do I need to do to update my beneficiaries? It really runs the gamut mm -hmm. from very simple things to complicated things. And I, I find that, you know, a lot of women are embarrassed that they don't know. But one thing I just want to impress upon listeners that it's never too late in your life to start learning about finance. Yeah, I agree. And then um, for the holistic approach of it, um, how do you incorporate, if any, mindset, mindset shift, right? Because sometimes poverty can be a mindset thing as well. It's hard to get out of it. How do you incorporate that? Sure. So just just an example, um, I'll use an example of a woman that we worked with several years ago. We'll just give her the name Lisa. Lisa's husband passed away very sadly in his 50s, and he he did the finances himself. And she she knew where everything was. She knew where the files were. And she didn't know how anything worked together. She was scared. She didn't know if she was going to have enough money. She really really was um, in that scarcity mentality. Mm -hmm. And just through going through all of her papers at her dining room table and showing her, okay, you have this much money in this bucket and this much money in that bucket, and showing her um, just projections of cash flow on how things would look like sort of the rest of her life if she kept a certain budget, it helped her do a mind shift to more of an abundance mentality mm -hmm. when she saw that she had the money and that she no longer needed to worry about scarcity. Yeah, yeah, that that is... That is huge um, to be able to to take that shift because sometimes we can we can create our realities or we can hinder our mm -hmm. future with that. So with the with financial literacy, I mean, I kind of just want to get into social security now. Um, what sure. <laughs> enlighten us? But can you share with us about social security? Because I have questions for the younger generation too. For those who are scared, it won't be there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so for social security, it's very important. For the younger listeners to not only think about the future, but as your parents are going through making their decisions with Social Security, get involved, ask questions, learn about it, because some of the general principles will always remain. Just for example, you're eligible to start taking Social Security at age 62, but you take a 30% reduction. If you, if you wait till your full retirement age, you get a higher amount. So it's something that even though you might be a ways away from it, you need to kind of have it in the back of your mind that it's something you're going to need to evaluate when the time comes. As far as the future generation goes, I know that there are always um, headlines in the news about how Social Security is going to run out of money, and there is no good plan on the table right now to fix it. But I think one thing that we can all agree on about politicians, regardless of what your politics are, is that they always want to get reelected. Mm -hmm. So nobody wants to be the politician that has to stand up there and say, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, I'm going to have to reduce your Social Security paycheck. So I, I am pretty confident that there will be a solution at some point just because these politicians at the end of the day want to save face and make sure that they are, you know, serving their constituents. So my, my guess, and, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, is that at mm -hmm. some point there will be some way to pay for the shortage with taxes, and it just remains to be seen who is taxed and how much. Mm -hmm. 
That's interesting. That's a that's yeah. That's a that's a different spin on it. It the shortage will have to be compensated for, and how where is mm-hmm. it gonna come from? What pool? What exactly pot of gold is that gonna come from? And is it gonna uh, is it going to be a collective thing? Is it gonna come out of everyone's um, paycheck? The higher taxes to cover to cover that shortage. It's a big coverage though. <laughs> it is. It is, and I just don't think we're gonna going to know until we get closer to that point. And so that's why you would behoove um, everyone listening to take ownership, start being proactive in that aspect. Definitely, definitely. So one of the first things you can do is take a look at your social security statement. They're available online. Um, They don't mail them to you any longer until you reach age age 60, but just take a look at it and start start seeing what your benefit looks like. Uh, The social security statements have been upgraded now to show you, based on your current earnings record, what your benefits would be at age 62, 67, and 70. So it's something to get get yourself familiar with regardless of what your age is. That's interesting. I, I, I just recently got married and had to go through the social security office and I had to go ahead and on sign on that same website to, to see or to, to put in the paperwork. And it does, mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. It does say, okay, this is how much you've made every year. Mm-hmm. And then at this rate, this is how much you'll make at 62, 65 years old. This is what your benefits would look like. And I thought that was very interesting. I've never seen insight into that. Mm-hmm. until that moment. So I imagine there's a lot of us who don't know what the heck that looks like. We just keep putting money into this social, social security tax every month and no, not seeing what, what's happening, how it's growing. Mm-hmm. And I think something, you know, Dr. Lunid, I know you deal a lot with routines. And um, with routines, you know, we're not always going to have the same routine every day. And maybe looking at your social security statement is something you put on your calendar to look at as part of your financial routine, maybe once a year. Yeah. Regardless that, of your age. That is wise. That is wise. So now that I have to get into fin- financial routines, habits, let's talk about mm-hmm. healthy finance habits. So I think that good, healthy finance habits start with regular check-ins with yourself if you're single or with your spouse if you're married. So you need to sort of figure out the right rhythm. Um, If you're kind of new, new to your situation, you know, newly divorced, widowed, newly married, you maybe have more frequent check-ins. You know, you could do monthly check-ins. Yeah. Um, once you get a good system in place, I think that quarterly check-ins are very important. And you start with something simple like a budget so that you can identify where the issues are. And, um, you know, if, if resources allow, I think that it's important to hire a financial planner to help walk you through some of the decisions because, if you're not an expert or if you're, you're newer to personal finance, then it's really important to have that advisor, not only for advice, but to sort of act as your coach and your educator and your advocate. Yeah. I was just thinking about how this is a business, right? Real estate planning is a business. Mm-hmm. You got to keep track of your, your documents, your accounting. You got to be able to know what's where. So tell us about that aspect of it because I don't think a lot of people see it as a business you know the especially the older um the old, older generation sure so you know the way the way we work as a business is we we do the planning and we help people inventory their assets we help people make sure they have all the proper documents on mm-hmm. file um you know with their estate planning you know we make sure that they're set up with a good tax accountant to make sure that they're maximizing their tax planning. And, um, you know, we look at their insurance and make sure that they're properly insured with all, all lines of insurance. Um, That's, that's a big topic with the life insurance, disability insurance, and look at your homeowner's insurance. Do you have umbrella insurance? Um, So I I feel like with, with financial advisors, we're, we're kind of the people that are there with the the clipboard and a checklist and we act as your quarterback. We want to go through everything in your life. We want to know about your mortgage. You know, do you have a good interest rate? Should you refinance? And we just go through every little detail and then we, we help you execute. We give you a plan. We give you your homework so that you can, so that you can achieve your goals. 
That's great advocacy work, I was going to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I, I'm sure you have a multitude of clients on a monthly basis, in, and then you see them daily. How do you get up, dress up, and show up, right? What, do, so what are the habits that you have to do that are non-negotiable to help you show up for your clients? Sure. So for me, personally, the morning routine starts the night before. Yeah, I, I cannot have a successful morning routine unless I prepare the night before. So for me personally, it's very important to take time in the evening to meditate, to be quiet, reflect on my day, reflect on, you know, what I want to accomplish the next day, yeah. and also be set up for a good night of sleep because I can't I can't be there for my clients and, you know, provide the level of detail and service without being rested and calm and collected. So I, I feel like my morning routine starts the night before. And then in the morning after I kind of do my thing, drink my tea quietly, you know, mm -hmm. once I start shifting to work mode, I check my emails to see if anyone is in crisis, if anyone needs to hear from me right away. And then otherwise, I just start preparing for the day and see who I'm meeting and see how I can best serve them and, you know, take care of any research I need to do before I start seeing my clients. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It does start the night before. We really have to capitalize on the, the quantity and quality of sleep we're getting because if we don't, if we're waking up tired, we can't, we're not going to do have a morning routine that's effective. Exactly. I totally agree. Yeah. And I like that you medit your meditation aspect is doing it. Um, you do it at night um, as well. I do mine in the morning, but it, it really does calm the mind. It really mm -hmm. does help you show up better, more composed, as mm -hmm. you said. Have there been days you don't do it and then you notice a difference? Of course, of course. I have I have a very busy mind. Um, I'm sure you've noticed through the call, I have to consider so many aspects of a client's financial yeah. life that I need that meditation at night to just sort of close the mind down, just to bring the activity level down in my brain. And I find that if I, if I don't do my nightly meditation, that there's too much chatter in my brain and I have trouble falling asleep and I'll sometimes even dream about um, investment research and such. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I do notice a difference. Uh, if I don't meditate, I'm much less rested in the morning. Yeah, dreaming about work. So you never thoroughly deep sleep. <laughs> yeah, I want to dream about being at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both, Marion. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, tell us how can we find you? Where can we connect with you? So you can connect with me by going to our website, and our website is www.bedenwealth.com, and that's Beden with a B. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, this has been insightful. Thank you for sharing uh, and shedding the lights on social security and how to be proactive, how to start planning now, and be have habits in place, you know, make it a monthly, quarterly um, habit to check into that to see what your benefits could be and how you can add to that. What, what else can you do? And so this has been very helpful in shedding that light. Thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.